Welcome to our channel today. We bring you another topic on how money is made. People use money daily, but we rarely stop considering what goes into making money in our wallets or the people who toil to make it. The Department of Treasury of the United States is in charge of money production. It is an order of two branches that produce money. The United States Mint produces coins, whereas the United States Bureau of Engraving and Printing produces paper money, such as dollar bills. Let's look at the entire process of making money from design to distribution. Would you please subscribe and click the bell symbol to receive more videos before we continue? Raw Materials In the production of paper money, the materials are just right as necessary as the manufacturing process. To give it the right feel, the paper, also known as the substrate, is a unique blend of 75% cotton and 25% linen. For visual identification, it has small segments of red and blue fibers strewn about. The paper for $10 bills in higher denominations were made of two piles with a polymer security thread laminated between them beginning in 1990. In 1993, the line was added to $5 bills. Unfortunately, this thread can only be seen when the bill is held up to a light source, and it cannot be replicated in photocopiers or printers. To produce incredibly thick printing inks, dry color pigments are blended with oils and extenders. The fronts of the bills are printed in black ink, while the backs are printed in green ink, thus giving rise to the term greenbacks for paper money. The colored seals and serial numbers are printed separately, with regular printing inks on the front of the bill. Design Engravers work from a drawing or photograph to create the front and back design of each denomination bill. Each engraver is in charge of a different aspect of the invention, such as the portrait, numerials, etc. The face of each bill has a different portrait depending on the denomination. For example, the $1 bill features George Washington, the $5 bill features Abraham Lincoln, and the $100 bill features Benjamin Franklin. These individuals were chosen for their historical significance and the fact that their images are well known to the general public. A living person's portrait is prohibited from appearing on paper money by law. The words, In God We Trust, must appear on all U.S. currency and coins according to a law passed by Congress in 1955. This inscription first appeared on bills in 1957, and it now appears on the back of all paper money. Microprinting, or very small printing, was added around the outside of the portrait starting in 1990. The words, the United States of America, are repeated in this printing, which is only 0.006 to 0.007 inches, 0.15 to 0.18 millimeters high. Except for the $1 bill, it appears on all paper money. The Manufacturing Process The Bureau of Engraving and Printing, part of the federal government's Department of the Treasury, engraves and prints all paper money in the United States. Postage stamps, savings bonds, treasury notes, and various other items are all published by the Bureau. The primary production facility is in Washington, D.C., with a secondary facility in Fort Worth, Texas. The Bureau prints about 38 million pieces of paper money every day. $1 bills account for about 45% of the production while $20 bills account for 25%. The remaining funds are distributed among 5, 10, 50, and $100 bills. Although the $2 bill is still in use, it is rarely printed because it is seldom used. The government spends about 3.8 cents on each account, regardless of denomination. In the production of paper money, there are 65 different operations. The significant steps are as follows. Engraving the master die. Engravers used excellent engraving tools and a magnifying glass to hand cut the design into a piece of soft steel, known as the master die. Numerous lines, dots, and dashes are cut in various sizes and shapes to make up the portrait and images. A ruling machine is used to create the fine cross-hatched lines in the portrait's background, and a geometric lathe is used to cut the scroll work in the borders. When a new Secretary of the Treasury or Treasurer of the United States is appointed, their signature must be engraved on a new master die for each denomination bill. The signatures are first photographed and enlarged. After that, an engraver uses one end of a pantograph to trace the signatures by hand. Then, through a series of linkages, this motion is mechanically reduced, allowing several diamond-tipped needles on the pantograph's other end to cut the signatures into the master dies. Making the Master Printing Plate after inspecting the master die, it is heated and pressured with a thin plastic sheet to create a raised impression of the design. 
and Alto comprises 32 of these raised plastic impressions glued together in a four across, eight down configuration. After that, the master die is stored. The copper plating is applied to the plastic Alto in an electrolytic plating tank. Next, the plastic is removed, leaving a baso, a thin metal plate with 32 recessed impressions of the design. Following that, the metal baso is cleaned, polished, and inspected. Finally, chromium plated to harden the surface and used as a master printing plate if it passes inspection. Printing the front and back of the bills. Integralio printing is the most common printing method. Because of its ability to produce excellent detail that remains legible even after repeated handling and is difficult to counterfeit, this process is used. A high-speed rotary integralo printing press is loaded with a stack of 10,000 sheets of paper. Each sheet is sized to allow for the printing of 32 individual bills on the same sheet. First, the paper is checked to see if it has the correct security thread for the printed denomination. Next, a master printing plate with the appropriate denomination is secured around the master plate cylinder in the press. Ink is applied to the rotating master printing plate. First, a wiper removes the ink from the plate surface, leaving only the ink trapped in the design's engraved recesses. Next, a sheet of paper is fed into the press and pressed between a master plate cylinder and a rigid, smooth impression cylinder at pressures of up to 15,000 pounds per square inch, 1,034 bar. Next, the impression cylinder presses the paper against the fine engraved lines of the printing plate to pick up the ink, leaving a raised image about 0 0.0008 inches 0.02 millimeters above the form. At a rate of 10,000 sheets per hour, this process is repeated. After that, the printed sheets are stacked on top of one another, then before the fronts are printed with black ink, the backs are printed with green ink and dry for 24 to 48 hours. Printing the colored treasury seal and serial numbers. The stacks are cut into two piles of 10 sheets after the integralo printing process and are visually examined for defects. Each sheet is fed through a letterpress, which prints the treasury seal and serial numbers in color on the bill's faces. At the same time, 16 serial numbers are printed. Before the next sheet of 16 is published, the press advances the numbers automatically. Between adjacent bills, the numbers on any sheet are separated by 20,000. Thus, the account is the upper hand left corner of the first sheet would be the serial number 0000001, followed by 0020001, on the same sheet and so on. All the numbers on the second sheet would advance by 1, giving 0000002 in the upper left, 0020002 below it, and so on. The bills within each stack will have sequential serial numbers when the sheets are cut into separate piles in this manner. The finished sheets are inspected with machine sensors for printing errors, folded paper, foreign object inclusion, and other defects. Any bills found to be defective are marked for removal later. Star notes numbered in a different sequence and have a star printed after the serial number are used to replace such bills. Cutting and wrapping the bills. With a vertical guillotine knife, the sheets are gathered in stacks of 100 and cut into 16 individual stacks of 100 bills each. At this time, any accounts that have been identified as defective are replaced with star notes. A paper band is then wrapped around the stack of 100 bills. After a final visual inspection, the band stacks are shrink-wrapped in plastic in bundles of 10 stacks before being shipped to the various Federal Reserve Banks and other agencies. Four of these 10-stack bundles are wrapped together to form a brick. Quality Control When it comes to something as important as money, strict quality control standards are required. Money with flaws is bad money that cannot be circulated. Raw materials are subjected to stringent inspections before being used, in addition to the numerous reviews that occur during the printing process. Color, viscosity, thickness, and other properties of the inks are evaluated. The paper is made in secret, tightly controlled process by a single manufacturer. The chemical composition, thickness, and other properties of the paper are all examined. Anyone else who manufactures or possesses this specific paper is breaking the law. The finished bills are also tested for durability regularly. For example, some bills are put through a washing machine to test the color fastness of the inks, while others are rolled into a cylinder and crushed on end to test their handling resistance. According to estimates, a bill can be folded and crumpled up to 4,000 times before it needs to be replaced. That's it for how money is made. Then, if you liked our video, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos.